Hey guys, it's Felix, and welcome to another FPGA tutorial. In this one, we're actually going to build something on the FPGA that does something that we can see. So that's cool. I'm looking at this FPGA board. This is the Mojo again. And uh, this is really stripped down. There's not a whole lot on here. We've got our pins and we've got a reset button and eight LEDs. So let's try hooking up the reset button to some of the LEDs and get them to turn on when we press the button. Pretty simple, but it'll get us in the flow of using the different components on the FPGA. So we'll come on down into the source and open up our main file. And here's all of our default inputs and outputs. Down here, we see that it has all of the LEDs, all eight of them, hooked up to zero. So they're all just going to be off when we run this. But let's build, let's hook up the reset to the first LED, which is either this one or that one, I can't remember. LED zero, technically. So what we're going to do is set LEDs zero through six and the most significant bit is over here so LEDs zero through six we're gonna that would be a total of seven right because it includes zero and six seven of those are gonna be set to zero and then we can get LED 8, which is index 7, of course, and uh, we can actually wire that straight up to the reset button, and this reset right here is this button, and uh, this reset N is actually the official name that this board, uh, this chip calls it. And it, we see that reset is inverting RSTN. And there's a comment here that says it's making reset active high. So that means when we push the button, it's going to go high and allow 5 volts, the TTL signal, to come through. Now, if we're turning on the LED, that means we need 5 volts, or we need high, uh, a 1, to go to the LED. With the reset button pressed, that's going to give us a 1. So if we wire the LED up to the reset button like this, the active high one that's been inverted, what should happen is when we build this, the first LED, or the last, depending on how you look at it, should turn on when we press the reset button. Go ahead and save this and build it. All right, so the project has finished building. Let's go ahead and plug this guy in. I love that light pattern. It's so cool. Go ahead and program this. Oh, we cannot connect. We may have to make sure that it's on here. All right. Let's try again. There we go. All right, it says it's done. So hopefully, I can come in here, 
push the button, and look at that. LED, I guess that's LED number 7, turning on whenever I press the button. Sweet. Now, again, this is super simple. But the main thing to take away from this is that this assign statement here is essentially declaring a wired connection. I am saying literally hook up this LED straight to the reset button. And the cool thing about this is this isn't some logic that says, you know, if this button is pressed, it sends a signal to the computer and it decides, oh, okay, I should turn on the LED. The FPGA chip is physically hardwiring the LED to the reset button. So it's hard to get much faster than that in terms of response time, and that's one of the reasons that these FPGAs are uh, becoming quite powerful. I hope this video has been helpful, and uh, stick around. We'll, in the next tutorial, talk about hooking up some of these external pins as inputs and outputs so that you can do a little bit more than this little reset button and these eight lights. So that'll be fun. See you next time.